Greetings, friends, and welcome to your weekly random. I'm Sir Random, and today we're going to be exploring more from the world of Hunarub. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for my absence, as I haven't posted in quite some time. I hope to post more frequently again, but I might not be posting weekly anymore. I may be changing the name of the channel to something more appropriate because of this. I have, however, been playing a lot of Dungeons & Dragons recently with a new group of adventurers and they've discovered a lot about my world, and even uncovered some lost history. So today I'd like to explore into this lost history that has not previously been known to any of the parties that have adventured in this world. So let us begin. Thousands of years ago, the world was lush with expansive cities and marvelous technology and magic. Wars were rampant, and most of the governing bodies that were in power just craved more power, and ever-expanding populations led to more reason for war. Not much is known about the magic capabilities of the past, however, their technology is very well known now. Some things that have been discovered that used to exist are the creation of what is known as a soul sphere. These are used to create warforged. They also knew about some transportation advancements such as flying machines, steam-powered engines, and land vehicles such as carriages with engines. In today's society, uh, the only ones who use this technology would be the dwarves of Ubenwald. They call this advancement clockwork, and it is all about using gears and moving parts to create something interesting. Even with all of these advancements, nobody could have predicted the Dragon War. The first Dragon War, that is, that happened over a thousand years ago. The world was covered in blood almost overnight. The dragons attacked multiple continents at once. Fires spread over the world, and dragons took as many people as they could as slaves. Those who followed willingly became dragon cultists and formed a religion around these dictators. The dragons enslaved everyone and used their forced labor to build amazingly terrifying dragon empire. Not much is known about the island of dragons, uh, other than that it's a brutal, rocky, hot land with four volcanoes. The only known tales about this land come from those that have escaped. In fact, 600 years ago, a group of 150 of varying races, led by Gornir the Great, a masterful elven paladin with a heart of gold, escaped the treacherous island of water that could boil an elemental. The group landed in the continent of Tumar. Very few stayed in Tumar, as we all know already, it's a dangerous swampy land that just happens to have a beautiful paradise in the center. Continuing the journey for a new home, Gorinir found the continent of Azumel. Azumel was perfectly large and diverse. It had rolling hills, forest, and a tundra? Very few ruins were found except for the city of Valenwood. Valenwood almost looked untouched, as if it was perfect. It was almost too perfect. The building had had to have been standing there for thousands of years, but it looked undamaged. This is the power that the ancients had in their architecture. Quickly moving into the city, Gornir was appointed king of Azumel as a whole. For 200 years, he reigned as king, creating what was thought to be a perfect society. He did not feel this way, and knew that it had to be something better. After 200 years, he needed to find a way to keep society going and formed a pact with seven dragons and four people he appointed as leaders. These four would become kings of the holds of Azumel, the Vale, Ubenwald, the Gilby Hills, and the Forest. The pact itself was to create the range, Rage of the Flaming Dragon, which we all know about from my previous video. Doing this would protect the hold of the Gilby Hills. The four kings and Gornir would then create and cast a Modify Memory spell, erasing everyone's memory of the Dragon War and creating an illusion that the world was just created. This caused everyone to adapt to their new life and forget the slavery and torture they endured. Hoping this was the best course of action, the four kings ruled over their holds. The people of the forest followed Arthur Runic, a human who ruled with kindness, much like Boronir, 
They had their own hardships, which we've talked about in a previous episode as well, so I won't go into it too much here. The King of the Vale, however, was lost soon after they arrived. Uh, no building was ever placed on their land, and instead the Vale holds the tribes, uh, nomadic tribes of the Lexodons. The Lexodons are uh, multiple different races of animal-like people. Most commonly in this world would be the Mammoth Lexodons. The Gilby Hills king that took Gorinir's place fell to an end by an assassin. This led to the hills changing political systems and moving to the elder system they are currently known for. Now, Ubenwald has had better luck with governments, but the first king my players hilariously renamed Brofist Stonefist is the last remaining king other than Gorinir. Brofist took command of Ubenwald like a true champion. He found amazing ways to create stone buildings and bridges. I will do a deep dive on his adventures, and that will come in a later time. But for now, let's move on. Brofist ruled over Ubenwald for 200 years and passed the throne to his son. His son Talius Stonefist was a weak ruler, and the nobility took advantage of this. Over the course of 50 years, the Dwarven nobles walked all over this king and set up laws, regulations that heavily lined their pockets and decimated the poor. At some point during this, the doppelgangers uh, from the Underdark were pushed into the surface by drow and have infiltrated Dwarven society with a strategic plan. They have turned the nobles away from the king. They formed a council and took over the Dwarven government. Talius couldn't stand up for himself, as he's given up way too much power already. With that being said, Talius was forced out of his castle, and has not been seen since. The council ruled giving power to the nobles and keeping the poor in line. At least that's as far as they think. For the next 250 plus years, the doppelgangers controlled the dwarven population, and used them for food and resources. Using themselves as bait, the doppelgangers faked a war between the drow and the dwarves to lure dwarves away from the safety to feed their population in the caverns, in between Ubenwald and the Underdark proper. That brings us pretty much up to current time in our story and the world as we know it. Uh, so this is about it for the history lesson today, and that brings you up to speed with my players. We've discovered a lot since my last campaign, and I hope you enjoyed this story. I ha certainly have many more to tell. Uh, thank you for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. This is Sir Random, signing off.